Howdy, sixth grade. Uh, so this is chapter two, uh, the Fertile Crescent. So we're going to be talking about Mesopotamia and the early civilizations uh, that lived uh, here in what was called uh, the Fertile Crescent. All right. So our first lesson is called the Land Between Two Rivers. Uh, for your notes for this one, I would suggest that you do an outline. So um, you notice that there will be different colors. All right. So the red headings are going to equal the Roman numerals, okay? Uh, then the letters themselves, like the A's, the B's, okay, those are going to be in blue, all right? And then the information that's underneath that, the ones, the two, so on and so forth, okay, that's going to be in black, all right? So to help give you a visual representation of the notes uh, for this lesson, um, you know, the best way that I would suggest doing this notes for this lesson are in a outline form. Okay, so here we go. All right, uh, so to set the picture here, Mesopotamia is called the land between two rivers because it lied directly between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. All right, uh, as we saw from the picture before, it's really in a crescent shape, all right, or, you know, kind of like a croissant, you know, it's in a crescent shape. Um, or half or quarter moon, and you think of a crescent as well. Uh, so part of the Fertile Crescent is stretched from basically the eastern edge of the Mediterranean Sea, where modern-day Israel is, in um, Jordan and Syria, all the way to uh, the Persian Gulf, so, so through Iraq and Kuwait. Okay? Um, why here? Well, two reasons, you know, that we've kind of talked about these as well, but to reiterate the point, um, you know, people at this time needed a source of life, right? So people are starting to settle down. They're settling down near rivers where there's rich soil. So uh, the Tigris and Euphrates serves as this life for the people, all right? Uh, you know, one good thing was that these floods that happened <clears throat> yearly is that they brought good topsoil. However, they didn't quite know when the floods were going to come because they, were, they weren't a seasonal flood. It was kind of flash floods. So a lot of the times, uh, people would be out farming or in their homes, and a flash flood would come and it'd kill them and destroy them, um, or destroy their property and their crops and stuff. So they were life-giving in that it provided for them the soil they needed to grow the food they needed, but it was also it also took away life because it would kill lots of people and destroy lots of crops and homes. Okay. So here's a picture of it, again, just kind of what we're talking about. There's the Tigris, here's the Euphrates rivers, all right? So when we talk about the Fertile Crescent, Mesopotamia, we're talking about, you know, this area uh, in here, okay? Uh, so some of the first cities developed here, all right? And they're independent. Each had its own government. Uh, the, why they were cities was because they had a common culture and language, uh, you know, each city kind of acted as its own state with a god or goddess, government, and king. All right, so they were, even though they were cities within themselves, they were states. So we call these city states. Okay, and that's really the most common form of government that we'll see uh, up until the end of, uh, up until really the beginnings of the Greek and Roman empires. Uh, so, with <coughs> in Mesopotamia, there was a territory called Sumer. All right, so these Sumerian cities had markets were busy. Uh, that were busy places where goods and services could be acquired. So, you know, if you needed somebody to work in the land, you could go there and find somebody. If you needed fresh fruit or food of some kind, you could go there and find it. The streets are very crowded. These were very popular cities. Um, the houses that were in Sumer faced the inner courtyards. All right. The reason being is that this is where the family life took place. Okay. So you have these these houses where the outside of the walls would be uh, guarded by a gate, but the inside was open so that you could walk freely throughout the courthouse. Many families lived in these houses. All right, it was very, it was very unique. You know, we don't see that a lot today. Um, so religion, okay, because we to talk about religion. Um, the temples, all right. A lot of at this time to worship gods, civilizations built temples. All right. And there were sites of religious, social, and economic activity. Almost the whole uh, society, so whole civilization, revolved around these temples. All right, and they were called ziggurats. All right, uh, religious beliefs people at this time were polytheistic, which meant they believed they believed in many gods. 
All right, so there was a God for the sun, there was a God for the rain, there was a God for the crop, there was a God for everything, basically, in life. Um, and so people created these myths to help explain um, why the gods were doing things, okay? And this is how they explained how it rained. This is how they explained why it flooded. You know, these are all, all these myths were intertwined into their everyday life, okay? Um, the gods were honored in ceremonies. Some would be huge ceremonies. Some of them were ceremonies just uh, within the presence of their house. Uh, but eventually, Sumer falls because all great things come to an end. Um, why? Because a lot of the states fought among themselves. Greed is a big thing. They wanted to be the most rich, most powerful. Uh, and this leads us up into uh, up into a time where there's a lot of infighting between them. And then finally, King Sargon of Acadia comes through and unites everyone. Okay. So in a nutshell, this is really what uh, kind of the beginnings of civilization that we're going to be talking about. Into. We're going to get into more complex complexities of civilizations uh, and how they are. Okay. So if you took notes in a outline form, uh, this is what they should look like. All right, if you have any questions, bring them to the class. Otherwise, we will continue working on this uh, the next time that we meet. Talk to you later.